oh, we're all hurting. We just hurt differently. And so how do we get to that happy Christmas instead of acting like the whole year has been perfect? It's like, okay, now, you know, we want to get to a place of joy, but we know we have to do some digging to get there. So I watched the movie. It was super cute. I, for one, am a fool for sappy Christmas movies. And what I love about Christmas films is that they really don't have an expiration date. So we can watch them year after year. How does this fit into that tradition and what makes this film special to you guys? Sky, I'll start with you. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's we love Christmas films because we know we're going to have a happy ending. We know, you know, we don't have to worry about being stressed in the end or, or crying at the end for the wrong reasons. And so, uh, you know, I love that about Christmas films, but I think this one is really specific to healing. And, um, you know, a big theme of it is like everybody wearing their pain differently. I feel like all of the characters are going through something, but some smile and do it. Some are charismatic. Some are, you know, kind of a little bit more bitter. And, you know, eventually everybody, I think, has conversations throughout the film where we realize realize, oh, we're all hurting. We just hurt differently. And so how do we get to that happy Christmas instead of acting like the whole year has been perfect? It's like, OK, now, you know, we want to get to a place of joy, but we know we have to do some digging to get there. So that was what was special to me is that, you know, we didn't get the happy ending easily. And I, I appreciated that. Yeah, what Scott said. Yeah, what Scott said. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, of course. No, 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 no um, for for me, I love I love Christmas movies. Like you said, they're they're timeless. Like you can watch this one, you know, a year from now, two years from now, it doesn't matter. But it for me, I anytime I see a Christmas movie or I hear about a Christmas movie, it automatically takes me back to my childhood, being around my family, being around the Christmas tree, because we all get together and watch these movies. Like you know, even. The older movies, you know that you know, you know, oh, you know that movie's coming on next week. You know, you know, it's it's one of those, it's one of those, those times. Of, and and um, I just that's for me, that's what sticks out for me the most when you know when it comes to films like this, especially Christmas movies. Now, in the film, there's this idea that secular music and gospel music don't necessarily align. That may seem like a dated concept, but so many people still feel that way. And I won't give the the ending away, but there is something that transpires that makes one of the characters realize where her or his heart may be. But do you guys think that there is a world where those two genres can actually play together? Uh, Sky, you want to take this <laughs> No, because no, I don't even say that because I grew up in the church. Like, you know, like I'm a PK. Like I'm a PK. I mean, I feel like we probably all did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I, I you know, I sung in the choir. I saw, you know, like I played drums, you know, like, you know, if, if I was listening, me and my sisters, we were listening to music that had like a curse word in it. My parents would immediately like turn it off, turn it off, you know? So so for me, it was it was it was interesting to how, you know, growing up and coming full circle to this and, and being able to experience this and see this because I had already seen this, you know. So, you know, so uh, without giving the movie away, like you said, I'm not going to say who it is, you know, he or she, you know, in the movie. I know. I know. Right? So it's like, you know, so it is it, this this is. This is what I'm looking forward to watching with my parents, like especially on my mom's a minister. So it's going to be nice to see, you know, like, you know, see her, see her, see her reaction to this. One. Yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. You know, I think what's interesting is um, kind of the idea of exploring what your faith is and getting older and being like, were my parents too strict? Do I like church? Do I enjoy this? And like, as adults, we start to develop our own beliefs because we grow up under our parents. And, you know, it's very funny because I used to think my parents were super strict and, oh, why only gospel? Or, you know, why don't you like cursing? And then you get older and you're like, oh, wow, I'm really digesting everything that I listen to, not just what I eat, like just, you know, not just what I watch. Like, so it's, it's interesting because I think we get to watch the characters explore their own beliefs. And I like that a lot because they make their own decisions about what is true to them and, and just how everybody has their own truth. Like you might be super happy singing this, but this might not be fulfilling to, to another person. So I, I like watching all of their layers unfold as they discover what they really believe in. You guys answered that beautifully. Now, um, Sky, as the daughter of someone who is a creative, um, sort of like we see in the film, the the storyline obviously is a little bit different. But you know, she's under her father's guidance and you know his strict upbringing. Was that something that you could relate to within that specific character of Willow? 
Uh, so my dad was not strict at all. He was like a barefoot artist who was like, you must soar and dance on the grass. But my mom was very strict, very Christian. Uh, New Year's Eve, we were in church. I'm like, mom, I want to party with my friends and have a sleepover. She's like, I don't care. Um, and you know, I'm very grateful for it now, but my mom was really, really strict. And I think it was, it was difficult for her, for me, you know, being a black woman in the industry, being like, how do I give you your freedom? But I'm so worried because I know what comes with this, you know, and getting to see through my dad. She's like, it's it's really dark. So I am grateful that she was strict because I know how to carry myself because of that. But growing up, I was like, oh my gosh, I was a minute late. Why am I grounded for two weeks? Like, what did I do? But it was that serious. If I was, if I was two minutes late for curfew, I lost the month. So my mom did not play. So, you know, now I respect people's time because I realize your word is all you have. So I'm grateful for it now, but um, but I was really, yeah, she was very strict growing up. Yeah. Now, BJ, one of the things that I loved about the film is the dynamic between um, Jeremiah and his father. I felt like that was something that um, we hadn't seen touched on in a film and like, a way that was gentle is typically shown in a very aggressive manner. How did you like to see that dynamic play out on screen in a more like loving, softer way? Um, it's it, it's funny because off camera he's such a gentle giant. Like he really is. He's such a gentle giant, and um, just to be able to see him transition transition in front of the camera, it it was beautiful to watch. I mean, we had a very emotional scene um, that we talked about and, um, you know, especially with the director we worked with um, because my my dad, for me, is my best friend. Like, I can go to my dad and talk to him about it. My dad is like, you know, it, it was, I, there was a time in the past where my dad would tell me, would give me advice and I wouldn't take it and I'd do the wrong thing and then, he'd come, then I'd have to come back and be like, how do I fix this? And he's like, you know, but now it's the opposite where Doesn't it I'm, sucks when your parents are right? It sucks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. As an adult, it's horrible. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. And it's the exact opposite now where I, before I do something, I'm like, what do you think about this? And he teases me about it. Now he's like, You sure you want to do it your way? Because you can do it your way and you can let's stop. Let's uh, you know. And so to see that dynamic um relationship between a son and a dad in this particular movie. It was beautiful because you know he was hurting you know he, he was hurting and and for me i'm like i'm just trying to live my life and not you know like without giving the movie away it, it um i'll just say it was is i think for the viewers um you you will definitely um watch this transition and it'll be beautiful and you know especially between a father and a son a black father and a black like it's like um, it's it's beautiful to watch. It's very touching. It's very touching. Now the film also touches on the idea of slowing down during the holidays, spending time with family, which as entertainers or people that work in media, that can be very hard to do. So, how are the both of you managing, um, you know, taking in the holiday season while still having to honor whatever commitments you have? Oh, no sleep. <laughs> Last, I was just. I had to go from um, an event to a birthday dinner to helping somebody with a self tape. And I just was all around the city within three hours. And, you know, I think I had a conversation with somebody recently that you're going to have to make time for what's important to you. And you might be a little tired. You might, you know, we were up at 4 a.m. this morning to start doing interviews. And so I really think sometimes there isn't a balance, unfortunately. But at the same time, um, everybody's getting older. And so for me right now, I'm like, how can I show up for my family? Because I was younger and selfish and did whatever I wanted to do. And now I'm like, oh, we don't have forever. Maybe, maybe I should make time. But um, sometimes, you know, you don't have enough time, but you, you lose a little sleep to be there for who you love. Well said. Well said. I, I mean, for me, I, I'm a workaholic. I love the, you know, we just got out of a strike. So I'm like, I want work, 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 work. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's get, let's get, let's get, let's go, let's go. I'll see y'all in a little bit. I'll see you. Let's go, let's go, let's go. You know, so for me, it's like, let's, let's go. But at the same time, like Scott said, you got to make time for what's important. And family is very, very much important. So you just, you figure out that balance. You feel like you figure out that balance and make it work the best you can. The music was really good in this film. It took me back to like my preacher's wife soundtrack. So how were you? How how involved, if in, if any involvement, were you in um, the musicality of this film? Oh my gosh, Sky was just talking about how she wanted to sing for you before we got up here. So Sky, go ahead, take it away. I mean, you go ahead. 
Say that I'm sorry, but I'm sorry. Watch the movie. That is me singing. No, you know, I mean, it was amazing because I think we were both really surprised when we heard the reference track. We were like, oh, this isn't just a corny Christmas film song. This is a beautiful song. And so for me, you know, before I started acting, I was a singer and then I just gave it all up. So this was, I was a little rusty when I went in. I was really nervous when I heard the demo singer. I was like, she is oh no. Um, so yeah. yeah. Thing. Okay. Talking. Here he goes. Anyway, so it was exciting to hear um, that it was really well done because I think that pulls you out of a film if it if it sounds like a corny song. And so I have to give it up to the music department that everybody was on their p's and q's to be like, we want this to sound like a real record versus a TV movie song. And so when we heard it, we were blown away, and it was just an honor to to be a part of something. And you know, like I said, I mean, I think of Whitney Houston who was able to do both, and um, and just how beautifully she was able to to make these characters real, but then you wanted to keep hearing her sing. So um, yeah, it was an honor for the music to be great. We were really relieved because we didn't write it, but we got to come in and then play and, and add on. Now in the film also, we'll, uh, there are two people who reunite in the movie. <laughs> Okay, I won't say who. And it's, it's holiday season, and we call it circling the block. Now, there's a few celebrities who have done so in recent years. You have Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck. You have Ashanti and Nelly. You know, it's cuffing season. People get lonely during the holidays. So what are, your, what are your thoughts on circling the block, and does that actually work? Don't look at me, Scott. You've been asking us a girl. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I will say something before you, you will speak on this. Um, I will say I am not a huge fan of it. I think it's one thing if somebody disrespected you a thousand times and then they're like, I'm lonely, come give me a hug. And then there's another, if it's like, hey, we were both working a lot, we were busy, um, we, we were a little hot headed, we never really got a fair shot. I think, you know, we, we all, um, uh, there's a quote that I love that says, we all eat a couple of lies when our hearts are hungry. And so it's like some people circle the block and they know they deserve better. And that I do not root for. However, there have been, you know, good person, wrong time. And, you know, I've allowed it and I've, and I've maybe sent a text like, hope you're well. But um, but I think it just it depends on how bad you were disrespected, because it is important to choose you, not just have somebody to cuddle with around Christmas. BJ. No, no, I mean, you got to say. Listen, I also remember saying that goes love the ones who love you. So I don't mind, you know, like responding to a text when they Where's say Where's a man will say that? No, no, wait, times, hold up, wait, times, oh, times, oh, times. Oh. Because they're oh. usually the ones sending the, oh, happy no, whoa, day, whoa, how whoa, are man, you, text? Man, yeah. Men get hurt too, men get hurt too, you know? So it's like, you know, so for me, it's one of those times. Those where, fake tears and all. No, 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 no. I'm here with you. I'm here with you. It's one of those times where, um, you know, during the holidays, you hope to get a text from someone that, you know, you, you know, maybe had a falling out with, or, uh, uh, you know, you know, I, I'm probably the wrong person to ask. Okay, me. next question. Uh, he will never say? stop. Now, never now, just, uh, BJ, I'll lighten up the load on on you since since we just came down hard on you. Now, hopefully you, hopefully um, you do get a nice happy holidays text. I I'm going to put that in my prayer book for thank you. Thank you. Put it in your prayer request, please. I, I will. Get it. Thank I you. Will. I hope thank so. You. I, I hope thank so. You. Now, I want to end this on a positive note since you know we just threw some shade. There are some very good. some very handsome black men in this film, all the way up to the dads that they were zaddying with the salt and pepper and everything. Uh, I just wanted to tell you guys, beautiful cast. You. you know, I, I wish everyone a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy New Year. I hope you get that text message that you're waiting thank for. You. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to pray for that, right? We're gonna... <laughs> and go ahead, tune in to the movie on December 2nd on OWN, correct? Yes. 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 Well, well done. And before we end, uh, what, what themes or takeaways would you like for viewers to get from this specific film? Um, we really want people to take away, uh, being patient with your loved ones, especially if they're hurting, um, have the tough conversations. Um, morning looks different on everybody and, uh, and spin the block if they deserve it. Yeah, but, the block. So <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Scott. 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 Sh
she would end on that. She would end on spin the block. Yeah, and no, but it's it's you know it's a really beautiful film. I'm really proud of it. We had so much fun making it. You know, we play all day, but of course, we enjoyed working together and. I just, yeah, I hope people really enjoy that there's heart behind this film, that we didn't just, you know, make a snowman and kiss and everything was good. It was like, okay, we worked through it and we we earned our, our happy ending, I hope. So, you know, I, I'm looking forward to people seeing it. Well said, well said, Scott, well said. <laughs> well, it was a pleasure speaking with you both. Thank you today for your time.